Hello, everyone. Oh my goodness. It's Fierce Female Friday, and we have two Fierce Females to introduce you to. I know it's very exciting when we have new faces on Friday, and we have two today. Uh, so I'm going to just dig right into our fun, right? So the first thing we want everyone to do is of course, introduce yourself in the stream. Let us know city and state that you serve in so that we can do those red thread connecting. Uh, make sure that you uh, get to know one another throughout the show. So go ahead and do that, whether you're here with us on Facebook or if you're watching with us on Zoom. Uh, there is not um, a whole lot that I have to share about the woman up a community that I haven't shared already. So we have had three amazing Friday shows and the wisdom session all on starting your own brokerage. So if you have thought for even a split second is opening a brokerage for me, or I want to grow my brokerage. What does that look like? Please, please, please take some time over this weekend to catch those replays. They are all here on the Facebook group. You can also go to the blog to catch some of the recap notes from the wisdom session. So take some time, give yourself the gift of learning and growing with your fellow Woman Up community members. Uh, and as always, if you've got a story to share, if something has been ignited inside you and maybe you opened your own brokerage and you've been kind of quiet about it, we would love to hear your story and to be able to share it with the community and inspire others. So head on over to IamWomanUp.com slash share your story and share that with us. All right, Sarah, I know that you have some pretty big updates on your side. Oh. So I'm going to throw the mic to you. Hi, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, Lots of, lots of different things happening here at CAR and one huge, huge thing that's close to many of our hearts is Joel Singer, who is the CEO and has been at the helm of CAR for over 30 years, has been with CAR for 43 years, announced his retirement yesterday. So we have been blessed with his leadership. I have been personally blessed by his friendship, mentorship, and leadership uh, for the last 20 years. Under his, um, under his guidance, I've been um, at CAR, and um, we are just so happy for him and his wife, Karen, and his grandkids, and sad for the CAR community, but, um, but I have every faith and um, and confidence that Sierra will prevail and I'm not going anywhere and neither is a whole bunch of others. And, and we just wish Joel well. Um, and on the, I know, <laughs> I, I would say he is such, he's been such a huge supporter of woman up. Oh, and when yeah. a strong male leader is so incredibly supportive of the women who want to put something for women's empowerment together, like there's a special place in heaven <laughs> for men like Joel. And so we are so grateful for all of the seeds he's planted with all of his leaders to create such an amazing environment for, for things like this. Absolutely. You know, I've been lucky enough to um, be on his leadership team at the VP level for about five years now, I think, and senior VP for about five months. But what I tell my colleagues is that Leslie let me fly. I was doing, I was doing everything. Um, and, and I was, yeah, very... what is it that you don't do sometimes? I think. <laughs> and I, I've been so blessed to be, to see that not only is he's so supportive of a woman up, but he is, practices what he preaches half or more than half of his leadership team is women. They are women and they're strong women and guy, uh, mentors, friends, they're amazing. So, so we will live on and his legacy will live on and he's not going anywhere. He's, he, he'll be around, but, um, but he'll, he wants to get off the clock. So that's all good for him. Um, Okay, on the work side, open houses, they're, they're now you could do them and broker tours, they, you can treat them the same as our open houses, but just remember to serve food outside. And we just got a release from the California state government. Um, June 15th is going to be a big day. Um, 
where they will no longer have capacity limitations inside. Uh, physical distancing restrictions on attendees, customers, and, and guests will no longer um, be required. And, and this is a, a lot to do with uh, the number of vaccines out um, in California. I think 51% of Californians have had at least one vaccine, and that's really helpful um, because then you won't, they'll, starting on June 15th, the, the state will now implement the masking plan, the CDC masking plan, which considers vaccines as you, you will not need to wear a mask if you have the vaccine. Um, and many other things, I'll pop some links in the chat. Um, we had our, our Friday town hall with the brokers in California today. All of the questions were about, you know, the opening, the reopening, and we are fully prepared to answer all of those questions. But I will tell you, a lot of the questions that we have been um, asked are in our quick guide. So I'll pop that in the chat, not only here, but on Facebook Live. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you come up if, if they come up anytime. So you can email me at Sarah S at card.org. That's S A R A S at C A R dot O R G. And that love it. Is it for now. Love it. <laughs> so you missed it because you were looking in the camera, but when you said, you know, masks, uh, you know, tossed into the side, literally Debbie had a pink mask and tossed it off the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, we, we got a sneak peek into Debbie's personality right there. Uh, so for those of you who haven't met Debbie Wong or Sharon McLennan, uh, Debbie comes to us from San Mateo, California. Whoop, whoop. And Sharon comes to us from the other shining sea side of the country in Florida. Uh, Debbie is actually with Better Homes and Garden Real Estate. Um, she is got a name change. So we're going to let her announce that during the show. Yes. And, and uh, <laughs> I can't wait. Can't I, can't, wait. <laughs> I can't wait too. And Sharon is actually with CB Splendor Realty. We're going to find out about that name as well as we get, as we go a little bit for, for, farther in the show. Let me start though with a little glimpse into each one of their bios. So Debbie has 30 years of experience in real estate. She started out as wanting to earn money for law school and decided to stick with real estate. Ta-da! She manages a branch. She's been managing a branch for 10 years and she's been a broker owner for the last six years with three partners. They have 300 associates, four offices, and they serve the San Francisco Bay area south of Silicon Valley. That's uh, they have continuously ranked in Real Trends top 500 companies. They are on track to close 800 million in GCI and do 750 sides this year. She also currently sits on the board of ARIA, A-A-R-E. Y'all know what that stands for because we've been talking about that a lot around here, the Asian Real Estate Association of America, and she served as past president. Welcome. A Thank little you. bit about Sharon. She's a broker, as I mentioned, for Cobalt Banker Splendor Realty, a, a woman owned and operated franchisee in Lauderhill. That's a suburb of Fort Lauderdale. How fun is that? Uh, she's been an active in real estate market for more than 20 years. And prior to joining Cobalt Banker Network, she served as a broker of record for Splendor Realty, which is maybe a hint as to where that name came from. Uh, throughout her real estate career, Sharon has participated in more than 1,000 transactions and has helped hundreds of consumers to purchase their first home. Yay. Sharon also owns and operates a private property management company that provides management and maintenance support to private investors, as well as condominium and homeowner associations in the South Florida market. She served on professional boards and committees, including NA, um, uh, NAREB, oh my goodness, I, I did not read that the first time in my mind, the Broward Affordable Housing Task Force, and the Grievance and Professional Standards Committee of, of the Realtor Association of Greater Fort, or La Fort Lauderdale. Oh my goodness, so many of those initiatives are so near and dear to our heart around here, Sharon. We are so excited. Um, you were also appointed and serve as the Affordable Housing Advisory Councils of Lauder Hill and the city of Pom Pompano Beach, um, past chair of the Lauder Hill YMCA Advisory Board, whoop, whoop, past president of the Lauder Hill Chamber of Commerce and South Florida Board of Realtists. Realtists, I love that. Uh, you, Sharon holds a bachelor's and a master's degree in economics. You have a 
something in common with Ms. Sarah there, and an MBA uh, in accounting. She is a Florida licensed real estate broker, real estate instructor, community association manager, and a New York State certified public accountant. Woo! Ladies, welcome to the show. Your backgrounds are amazing. We are so excited to get to know you. So let's start there. How about Debbie? Tell us a little bit about you and what you did before real estate, how you ended up in real estate. Well, um, actually I was in the airline industry and that was my college job. And so I'd always wanted to go to law school and, and I was trying to figure out a way uh, not to go into a lot of debt. So I had some other friends that were also real estate brokers and I thought, hmm, they look nice, dress nice, drive fancy cars. I can do that <laughs> job for sure. And so I went ahead and got into the business and uh, started working with a uh, John Finnegan, John and Therese Finnegan, his wife, amazing couple. And I never looked back. I said, who needs law school? I'm doing this. So, um, you know, 30 years is a, a really long time to be doing this business. And when people say, wow, you've really been doing it that long? I go, yes, this is the days before we had cell phones and before we had um, the internet. And they're like, well, how did you make money? And I said, you know what? It hasn't changed that much. It's, there's still a lot of basic things that you have to do in order to, to be successful. So I did that. Um, I managed a branch for 10 years. I no longer manage a branch, by the way. Um, but I've had that experience. And right now, I'm running a team with my daughter and out of the San Mateo office. And we're just having a blast. We really are. And Debbie, you're a unicorn because not very many people enter the business right out of college. Right? Yes. <laughs> Usually I'm second or third you know, accidental, accidental career. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I only knew is that, you know what? Um, I don't want to go into debt. I want to further edu edu uh, educate myself. And education has always been a really big part of who I am and what I do. So I have several designations. I was filming out that <laughs> form really fast, but several designations as well. And um, right now I am working on my uh, master's in organizational behavior. Um, wow. So uh, it's it's a really exciting time and the beautiful thing about real estate is that there's just so many different facets and it can really be a part of your life for the the whole time that you're working and you never have to retire there's always something to do and something to be a part of mm, I love that I love that so Sharon tell us a little bit about you I, I mean you have an extraordinarily like wide background I mean you've got even just where you've served so what's your highlight reel sound like well, thank you so much for the question and thank you for having me. It's just a wonderful um, pleasure to be here with such fierce ladies on a Friday afternoon. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, real estate for me was a second career. I actually um, started my, my life after college as, a, as an accountant. I was a CPA. I worked for one of the six largest um, accounting firms in the country, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, they're down to four now, but it was six at the time and um, I, I had a lot of really great clients. I worked on the Brooks Brothers account, um, Norwegian Cruise Lines, just Unilever, a lot of really big accounts. And after a few years of doing that, I really got bitten by that entrepreneurial bug. I wanted to do something. I wanted to create something of my own. Um, I tell people I got tired of, of tallying up other people's results and I really wanted to do something on my own and created something for me. So um, I, I met real estate and fell in love. And the rest, as they say, is history. I've been doing this for over 20 years now. What, I, what excites me most about the industry is just how transformational it can be in every aspect as, as an owner, as, a, as a, a facilitator, as a real estate broker, as an agent. It just has the power to transform not only people in their current phase, but people over generations. And so that for me is very exciting. I like the idea of home being your sanctuary. I think everybody deserves that. And so to be able to, to help people find that sanctuary and make good financial decisions at the same time is really that sweet spot. Because, you know, we can't leave the numbers out. The accountant and we won't let that go. But at the end of the day, I think it's important to help people make really good decisions. And I, I feel empowered uh, in this role to be able to do that. Mm. Oh my goodness. I think that's so beautiful. Um, you know, we've, we've heard so many stories over the years of, um, you know, 
women being inspired to create their own, yet there's a fear of going out on their own, right? Whether it's liability or I've already doing so many things. Um, I, I really, I mean, there's, there's so many questions I want to ask on that. I think it's, you know, both of you have kind of shared why you went out on your own. Um, so maybe we hop to yours, Sarah. Yeah, I think, I think what a lot of people in our community in the woman up community kind of second guess themselves or look to the community for inspiration. So I'd love to hear what inspired you both to go out on your own and choose uh, the brand you chose. So Debbie, let's start with you. Well, um, I was really lucky, you know, with my mentor, uh, Mr. Finnegan and his wife, Therese, you know, they started a brokerage is very much family style. So um, our children would work on the weekends as part-time receptionist. I mean, we put our kids to work, put signs out, help us do open houses. And so, you know, both of my partners, their children also worked for us. <laughs> my uh, uh, mentor's children also worked here at the brand as well. So um, it's very much a family orient oriented type of environment, which is very unusual. So yeah, there's some competitiveness and all that kind of stuff, you know, people you know, want to be at the top of their game and, and be you know, top producers and such. But um, there is a really wonderful and welcoming um, way that we have about us. And it's, it's just unusual. And I also do a lot of the recruiting for um, our firm. And that's one thing. And I love new people, by the way. And do I recruit a lot of women? You bet I do. <laughs> I tell them, listen, you know, uh, there is no glass ceiling in real estate. You won't get lumpy lumps on your head because it's going to be whatever you want it to be, whatever you want to create. And I think um, I don't come from a, a family of business people everybody's, you know, the kind of the punch in the punch out. And I always was kind of weird that way. I wanted to do something different. And I always thought, um, well, why couldn't I you know, be the boss? Or why couldn't I own the store? You know, I always had that kind of thing uh, about myself. And, you know, back in those days, um, my grandfather would tell me, well, you know, just get married and be safe. You, you could go to college, but then get a good job. And, you know, my parents never owned a home. So for me, I always was tired of moving. We moved around a lot. I went to 15 schools, if you can imagine, and one high school. So I'm really good at making friends. And I'm comfortable. <laughs> but I always thought, I'm going to graduate college, and then I'm going to become a homeowner with two goals that I had for myself. And um, so that's, you know, kind of me in a nutshell. And when, after serving, you know, so many years uh, doing relocation work, which was, which was uh, really my favorite because I considered myself an ambassador to my area, hmm. to the Bay Area. Um, and then I had an opportunity to buy the company. And I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm being asked. This is awesome. So I, I must have been the goofiest looking person in the room. Because like, yes, I'm going to be an owner. I'm going to buy something. I'm going to have a chance to, you know, uh, make this happen. And so my two partners who I just love and adore, they're like my brothers, if you will, because we're, we're very close knit. Um, it was just an exciting time. And, you know, the last six years, of course, when you're an owner, it's, it's very different. <laughs> <laughs> from being an agent there's you know big budgets and a lot going on and you know we had to wear many different hats each of us and it's a good thing I like wearing hats <laughs> but if somebody were to ask me you know what's it what's it like you know and I would say you, you got to like to wear a lot of different hats is you know just sort of the short of it um, and why did I choose a brand? I think the brand chose me. Uh, I have to say, first and foremost, I am a huge fan of Sherry Chris. If you, she was the first <laughs> woman <laughs> <to> a major <laughs> firm. And, you know, to me, that was extremely impressive. And when you meet her, she is just so genuine and so down to earth and just so authentic is the, the first thing that comes to mind. And you could ask her anything. And, you know, and I have called her and asked her questions and asked her for advice. I and mean, she's just so giving of her time. And um, 
the reason why I fell in love with the brand is because it's a brand that really is about lifestyle. I mean, a lot of people talk lifestyle, you know, where are this, but we really live it. We're all mm. about it. You know, I've had brokers that say better homes and gardens. Oh, is that the magazine? I said, you bet it is. It's absolutely the magazine. It's about life. So we are relevant 365 days of the year. Mm. After the transaction closes, we're still relevant. I still have people calling me for, hey, did you, I didn't get my magazine this month. <laughs> so um, the brand is amazing. And, and the other uh, thing that keeps me in love with the brand is the fact that it is an amazing online social media presence. Yeah. So I could, talk, I could talk about it all day long, but I will not be rude. And <laughs> oh, I, I love that. And I love that you, you, you heard opportunity knocking and you took that and you ran with it. So that's beautiful, a beautiful story. And Sharon, you're with Cobble Banker and we'd love to hear, you know, your inspiration and you're very new to the Realogy family. So let's talk a little bit about that story. Sure. Thank you. I, 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 very new to the Realty family. I've been only affiliated with the brand since May 3rd. So as we talked about a little while ago, a, a whole 17 days. Um, my journey in real estate is, as I said, um, I came from a family that basically our mantra was you go to school, you go to college, you get a great job, and that was it. So the idea of owning your own business just really never came across. That, that was not a conversation that we used to have around our, our dining table. And as I was out um, doing in, in a financial environment, which was, by the way, predominantly male, in mean, a lot of the jobs that I went to, I was the only woman on the team. Mm. And I realized that as I was sitting there, um, women are calibrated differently. I mean, we, we are very capable. We can do anything that we set our mind to, but we have different priorities and we calibrate a little differently. But as I was in that space with all those men, one of the things that I did realize is that the only thing that was holding me back was me because I was as capable and as smart and as competent as anybody else on the team, but I was a lot less confident. Mm -hmm. So um, that was something I set about working on, um, just trying to figure out how I can advance myself to get to the next level. I was terrified of speaking in public. So I joined a Toastmasters group and that transformed my life. I mean, it's just been a journey. Uh, but at the end of the day, I really wanted to be in charge of my destiny. I wanted to, to if, if I fail or if I succeed, I wanted it to be on my terms and as a result of me and my effort. And I don't think that there's any industry like real estate that allows you to, to be as successful or not, depending on, on what you put in. So I, I fell in love with the industry just because of the potential. As I said before, I love the idea of helping people be grounded. I mean, my home for me is a very happy place. It's my safe space. And to be able to help people, particularly I work with a lot of immigrants and um, first generation folks who um, are not necessarily automatically geared towards home ownership or that space. And I found that to be extremely fulfilling. Mm -hmm. um, over the 20 years that I've been been doing this. Um, as I was looking out though, I mean, the, the, in the one thing we know about the industry is that it will continue to change. It, it will, it's not gonna stay the same. And as I'm looking out, I saw different things on the horizon that led me to believe that it would make more sense for me. I didn't have the benefit that Debbie had of two partners to kind of bounce stuff off. Mine was really a solo journey and that can get a little lonely and a little overwhelming at times and so um it, it became clear that the direction that i wanted to go in would need more support more resources than me as a sole person would be able to provide and so i started to look around for a brand cola banker was the was the, the ultimate choice for me because their value systems and mine align um honesty and integrity has been the core of what we've been doing for the last 20 years. And so CB, the decision to affiliate took longer than the decision with whom to affiliate. Let me put it that way. <laughs> it was for me a perfect choice. They have an unparalleled reputation in the industry. The agents that I met were incredibly professional. The, the team that, that I was talking to about the opportunity just was very warm and welcoming. The, the, the everything aligned. Of course, the technology, the tools, the resources were great. But for me, the clincher was the value system 
and just the reputation of the, of the firm that made all the difference. Mm, I love that so much. So it, one of the questions that we had during our wisdom session, which was earlier this week was how did you kind of go about looking at everything? So um, before we dig into kind of what you wish you knew, I think we have a lot of, of amazing women in our community who are thinking, where did you start? Like, how did you decide to look Sharon at Cobal Banker and where did you see their values? Like, what did that look like for you when you had the idea I want to affiliate what what was the first thing you did well the first thing that I did was I, I actually started talking to multiple different agencies um, just to kind of get a feel for what they all offer mm-hmm. and um, the thing that I would say to, to anybody who's contemplating is you know you are stronger than you think you are right you have more in you than you even realize and for me the way that I make my decisions is I look at it from the side of what is the worst that can happen. Mm-hmm. And once I've come up with what I think is the worst that can happen, if I can process that and that will not be completely detrimental to me, I will take that calculated risk. I think a lot, especially for women, we tend to be, we have to get all the answers. And one of the things that I wish I knew when I started my brokerage was just how how little we know in advance of things happening, right? Who <laughs> in the last year would have predicted that we were all gonna be shut down for months at a time, had to wear masks. I mean, I just couldn't even imagine that we could ever get to the point where everybody in the United States would be out with a mask <laughs> for you know the better part of a year um, everywhere you went. So, so much is not able to be predicted and there's so much that's unknown. It's imperative that we recognize Look at what the what what's the worst that could happen. If if you can handle that, take the chance. You deserve it. If mm-hmm. you know fortune favors the bold, go for it. I love that. I love that you're 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 basically saying like you just picked up the phone and started making the phone calls, right? And <laughs> and we're looking for that uh, the red thread between you and the value system, and that is something that we've talked about so many times on the show, which is you know, people really do show you who they are in particular on, on places like their websites and social media, right? If their website says that, you know, their, their set of values isn't shown in what they're sharing on social media, it's a red flag. So we, there's actually a, another little layer that we all have access to now that most of us didn't 10 years ago when we were trying to make those decisions. So I love that. Debbie, how about you? Like how did, um, you, you said the brand kind of found you, BHG found you, but did, what did that look like? And is there something that you wish you knew before you said yes to them? Do you wish you would have affiliated with them sooner? Like what is, how does that whole story kind of come to where it is now? So um, the, the reality is, is that it's really about relationships in my humble opinion. So we were already better homes and gardens uh, when my uh, mentor decided to sell his company to myself and my partners. And so, I mean, but I didn't have to go that right. I mean, you know, as um, in my position, you know, you get recruited all the time, you know, you get calls from everywhere, from everyone. And, you know, there's just something about to, to be said about knowing the CEO of the company, that knowing that I could call her and say, you know, I have a, I have a question or I have an issue or I have a concern or knowing that, you um, the entire team is really just available to you. So to me, that's really important because of the way that I grew up in my business and in my real estate business, it was really very much about having support, having resources, having someone that I can reach out to and call any day of the week, any pretty much any time. So having that sort of slide over to become an owner was very valuable to me. And, um, I could have made a lot of other different choices and I have no regrets. I'm so glad that I made this choice. Um, and I have what a- I heard, what I heard was that it's the, it was the brand. You loved the brand, right? It, it resonated oh, with you, but, but it no was problem. also the accessibility of the leadership, right? I mean, you were able to pick up the phone and call Sherry. That is, that is huge. That's a huge value for owners across the country. Well, you know, the, the cool thing is, is like right now we have um, sort of like, um, I want to say there's like different multiple platforms that all of the 
the owner or broker owners can jump on to anytime somebody has a question, like we have a private Facebook messaging thing. Was, hey, does anybody have a good, you know, whatever in Florida? Or, hey, does anybody know about this particular app? So we're all helping each other. Um, there's definitely, uh, I would say, a lot of camaraderie. And again, you know, having come from uh, working for an airline where there was a lot of uh, barriers and it was very much kind of corporate, you know, a lot of hierarchy. Um, I just really didn't want to have that again or have that experience again. That wasn't something that resonated with me or, or my personality. Yeah, totally. Okay, so let's see. Um, we've talked about why. We've talked about kind of how you made your decisions. Um, how about stories. So like, what's, um, let's, let's kind of go on the, the lessons side of thing. Like what's been your favorite owning a brokerage lesson so far? Uh, let's start with you, Sharon. My favorite owning a brokerage lesson. I think my, my favorite, my, my, well, the most impactful lesson for me was just learning how fleeting opportunities can be. Again, just finding the, the courage to seize the opportunity when it presents itself. And um, again, you know, by background, prior to real estate, I was an accountant. There is a reason I ended up in that field. I tend to be a little bit more conservative maybe than I should be. So, <laughs> um, so, so um, just learning that, you know, Opportunity doesn't have a, a, a an infinite life. If you, if you don't seize the, the moment when it's present, sometimes you ne that never comes back to you. I, I truly believe that doors close and windows open, but sometimes you really needed to have walked through that door. And so, um, you know, just learning that, um, learning that, you know, no two days in real estate is ever the same. So when an opportunity presents itself, you need to be ready, willing, and able to take it on. Um, just, you know, immersing yourself I think for me um, learning how to be a better risk taker um, I, I love this business I can't imagine doing anything when I got in, into the business I said I'm going to retire <laughs> from this business and I'm on track I'm going to do that still <laughs> later I'm still singing the same tune so um, I guess something's working but um, you know I, I, I really think that um, just being able to, to, to be less cautious um, be more assertive and, and confident. We have it within us. I mean, that is what I've learned over the 20 years, looking back. So many of the things that, that you know, 10, 15 years ago used to seem so intimidating are just like, so, oh yes, yeah, so what now? And, um, you know, I just wish my, the message I would love to share with others who are thinking of pursuing um, this path is you are stronger than you think. I can't say that often enough. There is just so much more in you than you think you are capable of. Oh, Sharon, you know what I, there's so many, yeah. so many layers of what you said that just sing to my soul. And, you know, we know that women wait till everything's perfect, whether that's to apply for a job or to purchase the home or to start the business. Like we have in our heads, we've learned since we were children, you know, be a good girl, have everything ready. Don't raise your hand unless you know the answer. You know, all of these things that I think that this generation is breaking out of. And it's really inspiring the next generation coming up to, to really embrace that sooner, right? To, to know yourself. And I love that you've said a couple of times like you knew in your heart that you weren't a risk taker and that you were afraid to talk in public, right? Public speaking is in the top three biggest fears. And that, what did you do? You took a risk and you took Toastmasters, right? And so for anybody who's, who's listening to us live or, or catching the replay, like what is your afraid to take risks? What is your public speaking fear? Right, like I, write it down, say it out loud, and then take a step towards slaying that dragon. Tame that self-talk because look, <laughs> like Sharon survived. She's even here on a Facebook <laughs> live, like telling her story to us, right? That's so beautiful. And um, getting on the other side of that, right? Like there's yes. the upside potential, the things that you open up, not only inside of your heart and your, your soul, but in your business, 
Like that is beautiful. That is a beautiful story, Sharon. I beautiful. love it. I just like to say that one of the things that I have learned is that um, success breeds strength and more success. So as you start down the road, you know, to Deborah's point, action is really the antidote for everything that ails us. Because once you start moving, um, things resolve themselves and you find that you become more courageous, more empowered as you, you formulate a plan and start acting. I have a bias towards action, and I think that that is what has sustained me for the last. Ooh, um, a bias towards action! action. Oh, that's that that makes me want to roar. Um, I like that a lot. <laughs> okay, Debbie, how about you? What is your favorite owning a brokerage lesson so far? Wow, there's just so many. <laughs> how can I pick just one? Okay, well, um, I think. Our daughters are watching, our nieces are watching, um, whether we like it or not, you know, we're on social media or even in the office, you know, people are watching and what are we going to do to help them feel encouraged, right? I remember um, I, my daughter said, you know, mom, should I, should I go into real estate full time? Should I leave this administrative position, you know? I feel kind of worried about it. <laughs> and she goes, it's a hundred percent commission. That's really scary. And, and I said, you know, if that's what you want to do, you have to give yourself the opportunity to try it and to uh, prepare for it. You know, if you got have savings, all that kind of stuff, this is a lot of things that we do. Um, I, I, by the way, I, I also coach agents and also other business owners. So, um, that's what we tell them, you know, is have a plan of action, you know, take the steps. What do you want? What are the three steps to get that? And then what are the other three steps for each of those steps? Right. And so I, I had a girlfriend who is a psychologist and she read this very interesting book and I won't say the name of the author, but it says, you know, <laughs> women still don't get the corner office. So she yeah. said, oh, you got to read this. This is really good. You know, I think you really like it. So I read it. And then <laughs> so I threw it. I was just going to say, where's that book so we can throw it off the camera? <laughs> she goes, well, what did you think of the book? And I said, what do you mean women don't get, still don't get the corner office? My advice is if you want the corner office, then buy the building. Oh my gosh. I think I know and what book you're talking about. Is that oh the one that God. says like women shouldn't bake cookies or something like that? You shouldn't plan the office, but good girls don't get the corner office or something right, like or that. Something like that. Oh like, my gosh. Is so frustrating. Of, you know? <laughs> and um, one of the really good books that I read though was Lean In and somebody, you know, she got a lot of flack for writing that because they should, something like, you know, well, it's easier for her to become an executive because she's wealthy and she can get childcare and all this kind of stuff. And I don't think the people that uh, criticized her, I don't think they got the point. The point was, is know what your resources are. Okay. And if you don't have resources, how are you going to get the resources? Because I also coach uh, women, you know, that have young children and they're trying to start the business and all that kind of stuff. And I said, the first thing we look at is what are your resources? You know, can you get away two nights a week this time and Saturday from one to four so that you can work in the real estate business? Um, so those are my stories. Those are my favorite stories. Um, so well, you know, I just read an article and for the life of me now, the name of the advisory board flew out of my head, but it was this group, uh, here in the States that called like 250 of the top CEOs earlier in, um, kind of during the pandemic and said, we have got to fix, well, actually it was this January. Um, they, they called them all and we're talking like Google, Facebook, um, some of the big accounting firms and said, we have to figure out care, child care, elder care. And so like they basically, the, the number one question they asked everybody in order to like join this advisory council was, do you think that this is a problem? Like, do you see it? Because we know the millions of women who were impacted during the pandemic who simply had to leave the workplace because they didn't have childcare. Are and so still, I, are, are still. Are, yes, are still. And so there's, there's some really interesting conversations happening around that, Debbie. And I think that that it's important because I think that we, I, we're, um, I was, per, I'm personally wasn't a huge fan of Lean In because the resources were readily available to her. Mm -hmm. And now she's part of this, um, she's part of these stories and these conversation triggers well after that, like since her second book came out, right? Where she was like, 
yeah, how do I actually create the platform for those resources? And so this advisory council now is looking at how do we take some of the space that is now in our corporate offices that likely won't be used like it was before because people are going to be doing more commuting from you know working from home and how turn that into child care centers or how about a school yeah a school and so there i think that we're going to Yes, I think that we're getting close to that. In other words, I think that we're getting closer, even I'm not sure how that's going to look in real estate, but I do know that the government is actually even looking at programs for small and medium businesses. And I think that will open up a lot for women inside real estate who, you know, are like, who if I, I'm a single woman and I have two kids. Where do I find the sitter when I need to go do the, you know, show the house or do but, the thing? Yeah, this is where the women have to reach out to the other women in their yes. country. Say, the hey, village. Small kids, I got two small kids, you know, hey, maybe we can work something out. You know? Yes. Um, so good. Such a great reminder. Oh my what goodness. we did when the part, uh, pandemic first started was I immediately decided that I was going to call everybody and say, hey, listen, I'm going to do coffee chat with Debbie Wong. And I want you to come on and tell me how you're doing working from home. Mm. How's your Zoom looking? Where's your, where's your office at? Is it in your bedroom? Show us your office, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> then <I> even, <laughs> Sherry Chris was on the coffee chat. I even called up some local uh, political officials and asked them, you know, how has the pandemic, you know, uh, affected the way that people work in government now? So it was really a lot of fun and we had a good time with it. But it, I just, we were trying to figure out a way very quickly to stay connected to all of our associates. And so I did the, I got the chance to do the fun stuff, uh, but my partners, uh, we did uh, something every day via Zoom, some type of a training every day. Mm -hmm. We're still doing that actually. And I think uh, that's one of the really good things that came out of the pandemic is that we have an opportunity to stay connected with our associates, you know, via this wonderful platform and without Zoom, I would have not met you three amazingly <laughs> wonderful and beautiful ladies. I have a follow-up question to that, and I'd like to ask Sharon as well. Like, what will stick? I mean, I was asked this question mm. just yesterday. You know, we used to meet with the top brokerage firms in California, and we would all fly up to the Bay Area. We would, you know, rent a hotel down in Los Angeles, and everybody would email me saying they're running late because of traffic. And so, they, you know... <laughs> It was just, it was a thing, right? And it was a big deal. And we had like lots and lots of, but now we just hop on a Zoom every other Friday and it's so easy. And people ask their questions, they get the questions answers, they go on, they move on with their day mm. and with their agents. So that will stick. <laughs> that Zoom environment for me and for the brokerage community in California will stick. But I'd love to hear what, what will stick for the both of you and what maybe even Debbie will your uh, coffee and coffee with coffee chat coffee <laughs> chat with Debbie Wong yes actually we moved it to podcasts uh with my daughter it's all uh, the walk real times in real estate and so what we do is we chit chat because you know it's kind of a very serious kind of thing but what we do is we just chit chat about what's happening in the marketplace and what are, what's going on with the both of us and so it's been really a lot of fun and we post that maybe a couple three times a month um, so, but the coffee chat has sort of morphed into that and, um, I'm and also they're fun. You and your daughter are really quite fun together. I'm going to, I'm going to go grab that link. Cause it's really fun. She, you two ask each other these fun little questions. And like, she asked that. you, like you had a conversation about why you like skulls, which Sherry yeah. Chris does, by the way, Sherry I Chris really is also a skull you. lover. <laughs> Well, Sharon, what, what have you did? What did, what did you change in the pandemic? I mean, obviously you changed brands, <laughs> so that was huge, but like, what was that and what will stick? Well, I think to your point that, that Zoom is definitely here to stay. I mean, it certainly gives us the opportunity to be able to connect with people um, who normally just would not be a part of our sphere. So I, I think that that is a good thing. However, what I think I've gotten out of the pandemic is how important that face-to-face -face interaction still is. So I think what it what what I expect to see is a combination. We'll still have the efficiency of Zoom, but I think people realize after, what is it, 16 months, the sacredness of face-to-face -face interactions. I think those will still, they will probably be less frequent, but they'll be more special. And I think um, people will make an attempt. I mean, I'm waiting to go back to a couple of conferences for organizations that I'm 
a member of because I haven't seen those people for almost two years now. And, you know, they're like family. So um, I do think that uh, we will, we're forever changed. I don't think we're ever going to be the, the, the world that we were pre-pandemic, but my hope and, and, and my prayer is that we will take the best of um, the tools and the resources that came out of pandemic living, but still really cherish that person to person and, and still recognize the specialness of that and, and strive to, to fit that into our schedule, you know, maybe on a lesser, lesser frequency or lesser level, but certainly make sure that we still get that, that connection. Oh, love that. You yes. know, when I actually think I just sent it to Sarah a couple of days ago, but I, I follow this one gal on Instagram and she, she does the lettering, you know, the fancy lettering where they do like the pieces of wood with the fancy words and the quotes. And she, she does, she did this really fun one about a letter to my future self. Like, what do you want to say to yourself five years from now? The things like what impacted you in 2020? What were you so thankful for? What do you wish you never learned about yourself? You know, like, <laughs> and, and I think that it's such a great thing for us all to be doing as, as we're getting ready to step back out and into, you know, the, the part of, of the anx anxiety ridden for a lot of people, right. Of coming yes. back to each other to take a pause for a second and really think about what you've learned over the last year. I think that's so powerful. I think that gives us that confidence, the courage that you were talking about. Cause for some people walking back outside without a mask feels risky, right? We've been inside for so long. So I think that's so incredibly powerful. Okay. Um, before we go, so he's like that. Oh, how did we get to this point already? I know. Um, we, we'd love to give you an opportunity to, um, share any final advice with the community um, on, on anything that we've talked about today or something we haven't talked about. But what is that, that advice that you want to sprinkle over us? You want to speak into us that is right at the tip of your tongue. Sharon, let's start with you. Okay. My piece of advice is be brave. Okay. A lot of times we spend our time second and third guessing to see what the opportunity is. As I personally look back over my career, my biggest regrets center around things that I did not do. None of the things that I did, whether they failed or were successful, are the things that keep me up at night. The things that I really um, look back on with deep regret are the opportunities that went by that I did not take advantage of, um, that I didn't have the courage to seize at that moment. So mm. my, my word of advice is be brave, as I said, multiple times there's more in you than you realize and take a chance because at the end of the day I truly believe we're all worth it you're worth it take the chance on yourself mm, that's so beautiful so Debbie before you give us the final advice I'd love to give you the opportunity to unveil your new brand name yes uh, we went from three monikers which was <laughs> better homes and gardens um J.F. Finnegan Realtors and Better Homes and Gardens, Ventura Barnett Properties. And we are now all one name, Better Homes and Gardens Thrive. Congratulations. What a great word. I mean, it's pretty good on this outside of the building, the giant neon sign. I just love it. Oh my gosh. Oh, you'll have to post a picture Neon. I will. share I will. with us. Oh my goodness. Well, obviously you love green. So you're, you're de absolutely with my green. I got my <laughs> dogs, you know, and my grassy thing and yeah. my Tiffany Foss from Sherry. So of course I'm very proud of that. Ooh, I love it. Wonderful. Okay. So share with us through Better Homes and Gardens, Real Estate Thrive. <laughs> uh, what, what is your uh, final advice that you want to share with us today? Well, um, by the way, Sharon, I just love everything that you say. I could listen to you for hours. And everything you say just absolutely resonates with me to my all the way to my heart. So thank you. So I'm so blessed to be on this panel here with you today. And also with Sarah and with Deborah. But the one piece of advice that I could give is just be yourself. Yeah. Be your authentic yeah. self. Because when you are your, yourself, you're at your best. Yeah. And when you're at your best, you can accomplish many things. So beautiful. Amen. I love that quote, you know, be, be yourself. Everyone else is taken, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Absolutely. <laughs> it's, I think that there is so much beauty and we, you know, for the last, it feels like, I don't know, five or six years, the word authentic and authenticity were everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I think that this la these last 14 to 16 months, we've actually learned who we are. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's even more powerful today than it would have been a year ago, right? Like really there's no, yeah, gotta do it this way in this business. Yeah. You are the, the mistress of your destiny in particular when you are the brokerage owners. So thank you both so much for sharing your wisdom with us. If there is one way for everybody to connect with you, what is that? Is that through your website, Facebook? What's the number one way? Oh, for me, if you want to connect with me via, via base of uh, our Facebook, it would be Debbie Wong realtor, or you could just go to debbiewong.com. Okay. How about you, Sharon? The best way to reach me is probably through my email, smclennan at blenderrealty.com. Excellent. Do we All have, right, ladies. Do we have like a minute for a question that came in to yes, us? Yes, of course. Of course. So I'd love to ask Gracie's question and let's start with you, Sharon. What motivated you to start studying for your broker, broker's license? Ooh, that's a good one. Great question. Um, basically, um, I, I really knew that I wanted to, to chart my own course and be my own boss. Um, that, as I said, that wasn't something that we talked about at, at my my dining table at home. So that was something just breaking out of that, working for someone else. I had two um, children at the time and I wanted to build a business that I could leave for them if that was something that they were interested in. You know, I, I went to a conference recently and someone said, you know, you can't leave someone a job. You can leave them a business, but you certainly can't leave them a job. And so for me, just creating a, an opportunity for my children to, to come into this business if they chose um, was important and, um, you know, just really fulfilling and, and a passion of mine. Beautiful. How about you, Debbie? A uh, very similar along the same lines. Um, uh, also, because I really wanted to educate myself even further and learn more about, you know, economics and learn more about the law. I love the law, by the way. I love real estate law. And so I have a passion about all things real estate. And, you know, I've considered myself a lifelong learner. I'm going to keep learning. I'm going to keep going to school and I'm keep earning all of those long alphabet de designation things that I have behind my name. I'm going to keep going and I'm never retiring, by the way. So awesome. in 20 years, you can find me. Just go to debbywong.com. I love it. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, ladies. We have so enjoyed our conversation with you. Uh, we appreciate everybody who attended and watched the show with us live, whether you're there on the Facebook group or here on Zoom. If you are watching the replay, let us know. And if you have any questions for Sharon or for Debbie, feel free to drop them in the comments. We'll make sure to get them to them and get the answers right back to you as soon as possible. As always, we wish you all an amazing weekend ahead and we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.